So I'll just give a quick introduction to what this clip is. It's only three minutes. The War of 1812 uh, film is an overview, survey film. Very, very difficult to get a handle of any emotion. It's got a narrative because it's a war, and you start you know, how the war starts, how it, how it ends. But you just throw facts at people, there's nothing to hold on to. So working with our writer, I'm reading all the other books that have been written on it, we came across two people who we could concentrate on. And luckily we had their memoirs, so that's why we know about them. William Shadbeck um, and uh, I feel this is the name. Um, what do you want to say? Uh, William Atherton and Shadow Byfield. Shadow Byfield is the British guy, William Atherton is the American guy. And they were about the same age, and they both kept extensive and well-written memoirs, which are available online, and for which we, you know, during, while we were shooting this, we actually downloaded them to check on facts, like which arm was cut off, you know, because we, we were shooting a, a reenactment, and uh, I think it was Shadow Byfield lost, lost his arm, and we had the wrong arm. And the cameraman said, Right on the left arm, and I said, Does it matter? And the, the consultant was You bet it matters. Everybody will write letters. So we downloaded it on a smartphone and searched for amputation <laughs> and found it. So I'm just going to show you this clip where this is the one place that Byfield and Athens actually came together. And I will talk about the clip very briefly. We had done a feature film years before, and normally I show you a clip, but I'm not going to take the time. And we learned when we did that feature film that a documentarian has 90% of the skills to do a feature. A feature filmmaker has about 10% of the skills to do a documentary. And the reason for that is that we, we work with voiceover actors, we work with lighting, we work with script, we work with editing, we do all those things, but we're working with reality. The feature people have a set script that they're working with and they control everything. Documentary filmmaking is actually part of the feature filmmaking. We've discovered that in our first feature that we did, but we also learned that we could do it, that we could make things look good. And we did an 1850s feature film, Boyhood of John Muir. Not that much of a time period difference than, than, than this. So we had some confidence going into this, but we hadn't done those battle scenes. But my, my philosophy is hire people more talented than you and more experienced than you. So that goes back to budgeting, which I'm not going to talk about. This is not only the wrong body types, sometimes it's the wrong gender. Because right. everybody Women dressed as men, but, right. but it's frequently the wrong race. And if you're doing the War of 1812, mm -hmm. you can't be politically correct. You know, you have to be accurate. This is what was going, going on at the time. So we couldn't use them in that, but we did use them for distant scenes with a lot of smoke and we needed hundreds of people on, on the field. We paid $200 a day to each uh, of the people who, who came with the ones with the hand picked, but they brought their own uniforms. They had American uniforms. And uh, British uniforms, they had uh, what do you call them? What do you call them? The militia, militia uniforms, and some of them had Native American costumes. And they're very proud of sourcing those authentically and getting Correct. the right buttons. Correct. And we didn't have the to. So you didn't have to bring right. the outfits. And our, our so reenactment coordinator uh, was yeah. right up to snuff in terms of right. but we did have things historians don't know about. We had a lot of dry cleaning issues because they were using so much paper. And we had um, mass casualty blood. Mass casualty blood, there's, just, there's a hundred kinds of blood. It's matching clotted blood and fresh bacterial blood. We bought from Hollywood. We bought from Hollywood. We get from a supply. And I, I just, 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 if you're ever in this situation, do, not, blood? <laughs> do not cross the border between the US and Canada with a box that says mass casualty blood. If you, no matter how you feel about reenactments, you should feel the same way about archives and photographs. Because the photograph itself is framed. It's taken by somebody who has decided to put it that way. The archival film is frequently, in war, war films, completely fake, at least found out over, over the years. It is edited, and it is no more true than the reenactment. And in fact, our reenactments are more true than most of the archives I see in the theater, theater films that we use. Why are they more true? Because they've been researched to death. Because the historians who work with the redactors make sure that their buttons are correct, that their shoes are correct, that the muskets are correct. And we are working with people to make sure that everything we're showing you is accurate, as opposed to what's in those photographs and those archives. So be careful what you rely on, and don't be so dismissive of the redactors. The end. <laughs>